Squad, sorry for being late, but I'm going to bring some fire, if you're all right with that. Can I bring some fire? Yes. Like some major fire, ready, set, go, take notes, take action. How I like to train, I like to train in a couple different ways. I like to train with like a mix between mental mindset and a lot of like takeaways, like do this, say this, don't say this, do this kind of thing. Um, and so I'll kind of bounce back and forth between all of that. I've got a whole list of things that I want to cover, but I also want to have, make sure that I cover some of the things that you want me to cover. Is there anything that's like, oh, Ashton, I got to hear this that anybody has they want me to go through? How did you get 22 sales in one day? Okay, I can talk about that. Um, kind of like your referral process. I mean, you talked about it a bit in the podcast, but like the live demonstration. Yeah. Possible. Can I write on this board? Is that all right? Absolutely. <clears throat> 22 in a day. Referral, okay, what else? Anything else that's like, I, I, you have to touch this. What's your daily schedule like? You wake up, you do this, you do this, and what, what's the time break down? Yep, perfect. Sam? Uh, little top tracks to use when customers are ghosting you over the phone. At this point, I'm just like, hey, your install's tomorrow, I'll see you soon. And then they text me back, whoa, and I can get them back on the, on the hook. But do, do, do you have any other top tracks that we can use to is that pre pre sign up or post sign up or both? Sign up. Let's say they're ghosting for whatever, or even pre sign up. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Just whenever someone isn't answering, to try to get them to answer. Okay. I got a really good pre one that you can probably use for the post one also. I just had another another hand. Maybe that was the same one. Anybody else? Again, I got lots of other good stuff, but I'll make sure that I hit these. I'll quickly talk about 22 in a day. I'll just hit that one straight up. The way you do 22 in a day is you prepare, pe prepare your customers for your competition, okay? <clears throat> so I get my customers bought in on comp competition times, like big time, and I prep them more than just like that week, okay? I don't like go knock on the door and be like, hey, I'm in this competition to win, you know, whatever. I'll present to them, I work my normal, I do my normal pitch, but in the close, I'll say this phrase, look, it's not about me, it's about you, but let me tell you about something that's going on with me. And then I'll talk about the competition that I'm in and get them totally bought into the idea of, man, this guy's cool. And sometimes after winning the Tesla, I thought, you know what? I should maybe carry a flyer around all the time saying that there's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason that people at, um, at Kirby Vacuums do that, right? They always have, there's always some sort of vacation going on. Has anybody sold Kirby before? I've never sold Kirby. Do, is there always some sort of like thing, right? There's always a competition. There's always a, hey, my, I'll get to go to this Hawaii vacation. I'm only three away, right? People want to help people. And if they're, they're like on the edge, ah, oh, dang, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, sure, dude, I'll help you get to that thing, right? Because they'll want to also, they just, people want to help people. So I get people bought in on the idea and then so I did 16 in a day self-gen and then 22 in a, in a day with setters and that to get your setters bought in also, right, is, is the way that you get to that mini. And then DocuSign. You can't sit down physically in 22 appointments in one day. You have to have people pre like prepared and give them a deadline. People like deadlines. Human beings like deadlines. I'm going to talk about a couple of deadlines that I use in my clothes particularly. Um, and even, even on the doors, like as human beings, we like a finish line. How many periods are there in a hockey game? Three. How many quarters are there in a, in a uh, quarters? I guess I just gave that away. Uh, in a football game? Four. Four, right? So how many, about, anybody have any kids in dance or in plays or anything like that? My daughters are in dance. When I, it's called intermission, but when, when we get to intermission, that's half time to me. I'm like, all right, sweet. I'm halfway there, right? because there's an intermission and then there's the second act, right? We like to have a finish line. We like to have subconsciously a finish line. And so giving your customers a finish line to get bought in with you, hey, here's the finish line. You don't have to do it by that time, but just so you know, this is what's going on, okay? How many of the 22 were you actually in their house that day? Great question. Um, I don't know. I know a lot happened over the phone. Probably 10. To 12, maybe? But that's a lot of people like in a day, right? Starting. It was almost impossible. It was a time crunch every second. Every time. 
Yeah, yeah. You got to travel and you got to drive, and they're not all next door neighbors. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that's how you do 22 in a day. What I want to what I want to start with, and I'll get I'll get some of some of this other stuff. I want to start with some mental mindset stuff. Who's heard me train before? I mean, like when I thought about it, who's heard me train here in Vegas? Just Sam, right? I was like, dude, this is fresh. I've got all I can, I've got all my stuff, man. I just, I just get like, I've got a fresh group. I can just ready, set, go with all my my fresh stuff. So I want to talk about a couple mental mindsets, okay? And then we'll get into some practicals, and I'll bounce back and forth. The first one, the only, like one of the most important things that we need to know, okay, is that every single person that we talk to today, everyone. Every single person, the richest person, the poorest person, they all want what I have. All of them. Doesn't matter, socioeconomic, whatever, they all want what I have. What do I have that every single person I talk to today wants? What do I have? Solar. Solar? Okay, maybe some of that, maybe they don't. What, what is it? Integrity. Happiness. Integrity, yeah. happiness. They all, all of that. What, what, with my solar business, what I have, people want to do what they want with their money, and I have the ability to do that. Right? I, I work hard for my money, and I want to do what I want to do with my money. I don't, I don't like paying. Actually, I like paying tons of taxes, what, what, like, but trying to pay as little taxes as possible. Because if I paid a lot of taxes and wrote everything off, I'm making a lot of money. Right? But I don't like having somebody be like, you have to do this. You have to do this with your money. I don't like that at all. Right? But what is Envy Energy forcing people to do? Hey, man, this is what you have to do. Oh, and the rates went up. If you want to keep your lights on, you have to, you have to pay it. Right? That sucks. No one wants to be told what to do. I don't want to be told what to do. But Envy Energy is right now telling everyone what to do. So I have savings. I have the ability to have them do what they want with their money and the ability to have control. We all want control, right? There's some control and some stability in, hey, your payment is going to be exactly the same for a really long time. How's that feel? Feel good? Feels like you're in control? Awesome. That's what I have, okay? And that confidence of having that is what we have to carry, right? I mean, when you walk around, that you, hey, it's a privilege for you to talk to me today because I have something that you want. You don't know that yet, you just think I'm a sales guy trying to sell you something, but I actually have everything that you want and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it, okay? We have to walk around with that confidence that I have what people want. So when you go to the door, it's not like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna go. It's like, hey, it's important for me to be here. I'm supposed to be here, okay? Have that confidence. The other thing I'll tell you is the of mental frame that you should have when you're walking up to the doors is there's a shark in the water. Has anybody swam in the ocean when there's been a shark in the water? I haven't. You have? Is it freaky or what? Like, all of a sudden people are like, get out, get out, or like, what happened? They're harmless. They're more scared of us than we are. Right? Okay, so not his experience. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> you were petrified? <laughs> were you there? And the, yeah, yeah. Everybody, <laughs> everybody was running. Okay, so how did the experience go? Was it like this? It was like, Hey everybody, there's a shark. You might want to get out. <laughs> there's a shark. Get out. Get out. Get. If your if your best friend was in the water, right? You're not gonna be like, hey, maybe. I mean, it's cool if you don't, but I'll be up here with some sandwiches. No, <laughs> right? You're gonna be yelling at your best friend, dude. Get out of the water. There's a shark in the water. It's right there. Get out. I'm not getting in. You get out, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a shark in the water. Listen, I'm supposed to be here. Envy Energy is not helping you. This is, they're bad for you. You're putting your money down the, the, the tank. It's going in the toilet. It's serving you nothing. Let me help you get something that's gonna serve you, right? When I talk to customers in, in that confident way, like there's a shark in the water, then that like, wow, okay, he's got something important to tell, okay? Instead of being like, like timid, like, oh man, this neighbor's been hit, hit and everybody's like yelling at me today and I forgot to put deodorant on, right, whatever. <laughs> if, if you're going with confidence, like I'm supposed to be here and there's a shark in the water and I need to help you right now. Right now. 
So go get your bill. You had somebody talk to you? I know, but they weren't as pretty as me. Go get your bill right now, right? That's confidence. And that's what we have. We have something so important, they need to talk to us today. What I have is really important for you. There's a shark in the water called Envy Energy and I need to help you get away from the shark. Let me tell you why. Okay? Any thoughts or additional things around that mental mindset? I love that. That's an olfactory anchoring. That's what the offer is. Get to your highest peak point of a salesperson in that moment on that door and just bring that energy and it sells itself. I love that. Shark, shark in the water, man. You gave two really good analogies of the two key factors that make someone really good at this job, which is urgency and being bought in on what you're selling, which I, I realize that you lose it Constantly, you have to keep teach, reteaching yourself. Oh, hey, there's a shark in the water. Let's go. Because mm -hmm. I, I do catch myself at times when I'm on doors, dragging my feet. I feel like I've done this a while, and I'm right. sitting here like, oh, okay, let me go knock again. Right. You know, like, you, you're right. There's a fucking shark in the water. People need this stuff. Yeah, it's my so obligation. I mean, as a solar, there's people that don't. We have to help them. Yep. You know, it's, it's a good way, a good frame. Yeah. And it's a good reminder, right? We've got to kick our own butts. Like one of the hardest parts of this job is that we're all bosses of ourselves. And you can, a lot of people are crappy bosses of themselves, right? <laughs> like, dude, it's, I, I knocked in Las Vegas in July and August, knocked with the team two years ago. I know what it feels like to knock in Vegas in that temperature. And do you know who wins deals? People that knock in Vegas when it's 110 degrees out in August. Those are freaking champions. I'm a champion. And those people that do that are champions. And they, and they because they've got a discipline, they're like, dude, this royally sucks. It's like, not, so it's, it's opposite of uh, the East Coast, like knocking in the snow or knocking in rain. In San Diego where I'm at, it's rain. Like, what, is it, what are you doing out here? It's raining. Like, why would you knock on my door? Like, it must be important. If I'm knocking on your door in this, it must be important. That's why I'm here, right? There's a freaking shark in the water. It's really big. Do you have a question? Um, in your opinion, solar is good. In my opinion, solar is good. So why is the person at the door so predisposed that it's not good? Misinformation. Yeah. So Vegas is probably Vegas is probably like a few years behind San Diego in the amount of doors that's been knocked and people that have gone through and whatever. I mean, there's a lot of knockers here. Do you guys agree with that or disagree? Agree. agree. It's been hit, right? Let me talk about that. It's all about timing. All about timing. Okay, the, peop the person that will tell you no five times over the next five years, they're gonna be ready five years from now because their wife lost their job or <laughs> husband lost their job or something happened where now they have an electric car and their bills did spike or whatever. It's all about timing. Not everybody you talk to, everybody you talk to today, they want what you have, but not all of them are gonna realize that today. And that's okay, I'm just out there, find, I gotta try and find my couple today, right? If I, get, if I work my tail off, seven hours of knocking, every day, six days a week, and I get one lead at the last door every day, is that worth it? Yeah. One lead a day, Say your closer closes half of those, three of those. Let's say two of those give it an install. Your average commission check here is what? For a whole, a whole deal, like five, six grand, right? Let's say you split that six grand twice. You just made six grand in a week times 4.3 weeks in a month. Is that pretty good? That's freaking life-changing money. Life-changing money. It's worth finding one person every day no matter how long it takes you, right? One person every day is 100% worth it, the hottest or the coldest. And they're all not gonna be ready. All, all my customers are not ready right now, right? But I'm a pro, I'm gonna be in this game for a long time. And so I'm gonna keep coming around your neighborhood, I'm gonna keep being here, you're gonna keep seeing this <laughs> from me over and over and over and over again. And I'm better than the last guy. I knock on that door, hey man, there's been 25 people here. And I, I'll use this joke like, yeah, but they probably weren't as pretty as me, right? So what I'm doing is, I get right into it. I'm confident, I'm supposed to be there. That's how I act, that's how I talk. That's how I show up and I smile. 
The, one of the easiest, simplest things that people forget to do, especially when it's 110 in August, is this. How you doing? Can run for president. <laughs> we forget to do the simplest thing in the world, right? When I smile at people, they smile back. I had a brand new rep that was like struggling on the doors, and I was like, "Let's go, let's go out." And we, he knocked the first door. He knocked on, knocked on the door. Hey, how you, how you doing? My name's Dallin, and I'm working on this power program. And he, he just, I can't even do it, like, how he did it. <laughs> he looked like he wanted to beat that guy up. Right off the door, we came off the door, and I'm like, dude, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, you look like you wanted to eat that guy. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? I was like, you look so mad at him. Like, it was, like, it was horrible, dude. It was, like, it was bad. He's like, oh, I didn't realize I was doing that. I was like, yeah, just do this on the next door. Doesn't even matter if you get the lead or not. And we knocked on the door, and he was real intentional about it, and he, and he smiled, and he got a smile back, and we didn't get the lead. We walked away, and he's like, dude, that was so nice. He smiled at me. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta smile at him, and then he's gonna smile at you, right? I, and I understand my body. I understand I get a little hangry if I've had not a lot of water and not a lot of food, and I've been out for a little while. So I understand that about me, and you've got to understand about where your triggers are and aren't, right? And got to figure out like how to have good conversations with people if you're in that state. Because I can get hangry and be like, okay, all right, that's not normally me. Right, sorry about that, that wasn't me. Can I get some water? I won't be hangry on the next door. Can you help me a little bit, right? And smile at people because they're going to be there. So it's a timing thing. I had a lady that I knocked on her door. She was going to save a crap ton of money. It wasn't the right time. And I followed up with her periodically. And my a little life hack, I, I have texts in my, um, in my, or my contacts. I'll put a little bomb emoji next to people's names if they're, like it was a good conversation and it was something that would eventually become a lead, a lead right? There's people that you go and knock on their door, you know they're gonna go solar at some time, right? You know that the conversations that they're having yeah, we looked at it, it just wasn't the right time, and oh, my sister's got it, my mom has it, but we've just been so busy, like, okay, you're gonna get sore, right? You can, there, you can feel some people that are gonna get sore. So now it's just a matter of who they're gonna go with, and I'm a pro, and I'm, they're gonna go with me, okay? So I'll, I'll put a bomb emoji, save their contact information, and periodically follow up with them, write them handwritten notes. I added this one lady onto my Christmas list, because I was like, Donna is gonna go sore, I just know she is. It's just not the right time, so she was getting Christmas cards from me. And little did I know that I signed up her, sister, her brother and sister-in-law. Five years down the road, her husband lost his job. She calls me up, says, hey, Ashton, my husband just lost his job, Ralph just lost his job, and, and we, we need to get some solar on the house. We need some savings everywhere we can get. Awesome, Donna, sweet, I'll come over. Who's the pro that she's gonna go with? She's had 500 people, other people knock on her door since then. We had a good interaction. I touched base every once in a while. She was getting cards from me, bam, $8,000 later. It was worth the follow. So, so okay, that's that. I need to learn a lot of that. Person. So, uh, I, I like the contact thing where you put the bomb emoji next to it. I'm guessing you just once a week or something. You just go through them, shoot them text or call them. Or something. Not, not once a week even. Once a month. Yeah. And then something like that. Yeah. If you find some time, you shoot them a call or text, right? Yeah. But then you brought in the Christmas list, and now I need to know more about that. So, what else do you use aside from just the contacts? Where, like, when you know someone's super solid, you want to follow up. Five years is a long time. It's like, a long time. I don't even remember people I knocked on two weeks ago. So right. <laughs> what else do you use other than just the contacts list? Like you have the Christmas list. So explain that. So I've got, in my, I'm old school. I've got a notebook over here. I've got hot prospects uh -huh. that I, I kind of have, and I'll just kind of physically write them out, or I'll put them on my phone sometimes. Information do you put just phone number and address? Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll put their name, like on that, on that thing, I'll put their name and then kind of where I remember them. So I would save them in my phone. I don't need to go, um, you know, it depends on if you're using Canvas or if you're using like, even if, you, if you've created a proposal for them, excuse my language, if you've created some options for them, then you can just go to Solo, right? And type in their name and they'll give you their address and their information. But in my phone, I'll, I'll write down 
who they were and a little bit about them because I've seen tons of people, right? Uh, if someone tells me to specifically follow up down the road, like three months, I'll be like, yeah, I'll follow up. You know, come on, I can follow up. I'm like, no, listen, three months. I'll put it in my calendar three months down the road. And I'll, because I've seen, I'll have seen thousands of people between then, I'll put lots of data, address, phone number, how I met them, a little bit about them, right? I did that with a lady a year. She was like, follow up in a year. I put it 11 months out and knocked on her door a year later. And she's like, oh, no, no, we're not interested. I, and I was like, no, no, you told me to come back in, in a year. I was probably wearing a different shirt. And she was like, oh, yeah. I was like, have you ever had somebody actually follow up in a year when you, when they, you, you asked them to? No. I was like, that's what you're going to get with me. Right? <laughs> And so, so I'll put it on my calendar. I'll follow up with them on my count. I'll put it on my calendar with lots of information on there. Uh, if there's, if they say a specific time, um, and then part of the, how do you get people from ghosting you? I'll go right to that. My pre sign up text that I'll use if it's been a while and they haven't responded, they've been ghosting me. I'll say this. I learned this from a car sales guy. I'll say, hey, have you given up on the idea of saving lots of money by going solar? No one likes being told they're giving up or no one likes to give up. I don't like to give up. That's not part of my nature or my character. I don't give up. So when I put people like, hey, you're a quitter. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, like, or, or are you a quitter, yeah. right, is the question. Hey, have you, have you given up on the idea of saving lots of money by going solar? I have got responses back from people super fast. You could use the same thing even if you've signed them up. Like, you, I mean, you got to be careful. You don't want to call your customers quitters. But you can use the same idea, right? The same concept of like, hey, haven't heard from you a little bit. Just so you know, I'm in your corner. I haven't given up on this, right? And I'm working on it so that you can get to where you need to go, right? But that idea of have you given up on? So if, if, they're, if I've texted periodically and they're not kind of get me anywhere, I'll pose that question to them and it makes people move. Oh, dude, sorry, we decided to do this other project first. Oh man, yeah, I totally forgot, still interested, call me next week. And if, they're, and if, and if you have done that and they don't respond, maybe you try one more, but if after that it's kind of like, all right, you are a quitter. <laughs> you know? um, Them back up. A week. A week? Mm -hmm. If they haven't contacted you in a week. So you've set the appointment and then they rescheduled? Yeah, or they, they said. With you and they're like, oh, uh, actually, my husband got cousin to work. I'll, I'll reach out to you to schedule a better time. To come is this back. through phone or through or text? Just either. Okay. If, you're, if you've got them on the phone, have a conversation with them. Yeah. Okay. If you've got them on the phone, hey, so usually when people tell me that, that usually means that they're actually not interested. Are you just not interested and you're just trying to be nice? Like you just call it as, as, as it is, right? It's, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste their time. More than anything. And, and there's a lot of people that want to go solar today with me. And if that's not you, that's okay, because somebody else is going to want to get it. They want it. So, you just, so, so sometimes when people tell me that, that what a couple things could happen, they think they maybe know more about the actual options than they do because of what we talked about at the door and they're just deciding that they're not interested, or they sincerely have something that came up. Did you sincerely have, is, is, are you guys just not interested and you're just being nice, or would you really like to reschedule, okay? If they say, so that kind of puts it on them a little bit, like in their face a little bit, and that's okay to be bold like that. And then if they say, oh no, no, we sincerely do want to put, I just don't know when. What I'll say, when I'm scheduling an appointment and or in this situation, I'll use the phrase pencil in. Okay, so I'm busy, you're busy, you don't know the time, I don't really know a good time either, but why don't we pencil something in? What can you do with pencil? Erase. You can erase it, but usually when you pencil an appointment, they don't erase it, okay? I'm busy, you're busy, why don't we just pencil something in, and, and if we need to change again, that's totally fine, but let's just pencil something in on the calendar. When do you think would be the, you know, even if it was like a week or two from now? And if you don't respond to that text, well, so if that's over, that's over the phone. So I'm having, I'm having this conversation over the phone, okay? And then I'm trying to get something on the calendar with them over the phone. If they text me, 
that's a little bit different, right? Because they, they can't hear my passion, they can't hear my tone of voice. Texting is really dangerous. Our actual communication is six or seven percent words and everything else, right? Nonverbals and, and tone and whatever. But if it's just a text, it's 100% words. So that's, that's going to be dangerous, right? What you say can be totally interrupted the wrong way, right? We all know that. So um, if they're saying that to me through a text, like, hey, so sorry, and we don't have anything, I'd be like, I'll, I'll kind of respond with a similar thing, like, hey, totally understand. Sometimes when people say that to me, what they're really saying is that they're just not interested and they're being nice about, about not being, like, not wanting to meet. Um, is that, are, you, is, are you sincerely still interested and want to reschedule, or, or are you just not interested? And be bold about it, yeah. okay? Um, and then if they respond back, however they respond, if they're like, yeah, we, I, truthfully, we just aren't sure, and that's why we don't really want to schedule a time, I'll, I'll try to help them, like, I totally understand. What I'll, a, a phrase that I use also that's worked really well is ringer. I won't put you through the ringer. A lot of people have already been through the ringer. Okay? If, they, if, they've, if, sat, if they've told you beforehand that they've sat with people, listen, I, I don't need to put you through the ringer. You've already gone through the ringer. Okay? So I'll say that to them too. Look, I don't need to put you through the ringer. I don't know what other people have told you though. What my program is is like probably different than what you've heard, but I don't know. So why don't, we, why don't we just pencil something in? Even if you don't know an exact time, let's just pencil something in that you think would be best and then we can, we can meet up and try that, okay? So I'm gonna to skip to, this is a practical takeaway. If you're setting appointments and you're, they're kind of giving you a, 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 like, I don't really know, give them the pencil in line, okay? If you're setting an appointment and how, I, I, I keep my knocking time sacred and I would encourage all of you guys to keep your knocking time sacred and your closer's knocking time sacred Okay, when I'm setting an appointment with somebody, I say this. Hey, it's usually better for me before noon or after like 7, 7.30. Can you, are you guys available like before noon tomorrow or even tonight after 7.30? Would one of those two work for you? What that does, a lot of times people, if you knock on their door at like 5 in the afternoon, they may be like, oh yeah, it's 5 o'clock right now. Why, why don't we just do 5 o'clock tomorrow? When really that guy would be home at 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. But I just caught him at 5. It helps if instead of being at an appointment at five o'clock, if I can be at an appointment at 7.30 and knock for another two and a half hours to create another lead so I can schedule again the next day, I'm winning that way, right? So I would encourage you to do your best to keep your knocking time sacred and not schedule appointments in the middle of your knocking time and even for your, for your closers, okay? Make sure that they have time before, like that they can get out there and knock too during prime time so that they're not just sitting in appointments during prime time, okay? But it's usually better for me before 12 or after 7.30. What do either of those times work for you? Well, I don't know. Not exactly sure when it would work. I gotta check with my husband. Look, I'm busy. You guys are busy. When do you think you would both be here? When would be a time we could pencil something in? We could just pencil in and we could erase it if we need to. When do you think you'd both be here? Okay, it seems softer to say we could just pencil it in, but it's really the exact same thing. I rarely have people erase it and reschedule, right? When I've penciled it in, I, I've, got, I've gotten them to their calendar, okay? Another, another thing that I'll use is I'll break out my phone, okay? If I'm like talking to somebody and they're like, oh, I'm not exactly sure, I'll be like, do you, keep, do you keep your calendar on your phone? And I'll point to their pocket with my phone. <laughs> do, you, do you keep your calendar on, like on your phone? And it kind of becomes a little awkward, like, yeah, dude, I, I get it. And they'll, but they'll pull their phone out, right? Because I'm like pointing at their phone with my, do you keep your calendar on your phone? Yeah, why don't, why don't you pull that up and we'll see if we can pull something in. Right? Because, again, it just makes it a little strange or awkward. I'm, I'm okay to let things be socially awkward if I, if for the right reason, right? Um, I think it's funny and it's also like, it's also, and it, it, it's okay for me. I, I'm, I'm okay to do that. Um, oh, sweet. I just missed a phone call from a bomb emoji and a, te and a text. He's ready to sign up. That's what's up. Um, okay, so I skipped over that one. Let me go back to some mental mindset. Any, any questions on pencil in? Do you keep your calendar on your phone? Any of that? 
Yeah, when you pencil in, I mean, are you actually, like, when it's kind of iffy, are you calling to confirm or are you just showing up cold? I don't call to confirm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah. So when you pencil in, I, yeah. that's what we do. I was just curious. What you what I'll just show, I, so I'll let, me, let me finish this set. I, you're, that, that, good call out. Let me finish the whole setting, my appointment. So let's pencil something in. Well, what I'll say then when I confirm the appointment is I'll say this. And you don't have to do this, but this is how I do it. On my own self-gens for sure, and even as a setter, just depending on how quality the sets are, okay? I'll say, uh, okay, and so listen, plan on Lee being here. He, my, my, my manager, Lee, is going to come by for, for the appointment. Plan on him being here unless he's dead or in the hospital. And let's just pray he's neither of those. But he's going to be here. He's not going to call or text in advance. He'll be here. He'll show up at that time. So I want to make sure that you guys will be, you'll, you'll both be here at that time too, right? Both you and your wife. Okay, perfect. He'll be here unless he's dead or in the hospital. What that does when you say that is, whoa, this is serious. He's talking about death, <laughs> right? This, he means business. This means business. This is serious stuff. So when, when we say that, it, they, it, it means we mean business. And um, it, it just makes it so, more solid. So I'm giving them the heads up that I don't call in advance. What I, the reason I don't, I'll tell you the reason I don't. I don't know if you guys ever had a hard day at work and you come home and you're like, dude, I'm done. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to eat my dinner and relax. If, if I've texted somebody that's had one of those days at 6 o'clock saying, hey, getting excited to see you at 730. And he's like, oh, dude, I don't want to talk to anybody today. Hey, man, sorry, tonight's not, the, not a very good night. When really, it probably is just fine. If I just showed up at 730 and knocked on his door, he's going to be like, oh, dang it, dude, I forgot you were coming. Come on in. Because as humans, we want to be our word, even though we're not always the best at keeping our word. Mm -hmm. And if he said, yeah, this is the time that he can come, and he's actually there, even if he's in a bad mood, more, more often than not, he'll let me go in and sit down with him and present something good to him and change his mood, right? But if I text him in advance, it's just an easy out. Like, oh yeah, it actually isn't going to work very good tonight. So uh, my custom, he's either going to be, my, my manager's going to be here or unless he's dead or in the hospital. So just plan on him being here. And let's pray he's not ever you know, dead or in the hospital. <laughs> right? As I finish that, then I, I'll recap the, um, just kind of what we talked about. Not a whole lot. The more, the, the least amount of information you can give to the customer at the door while still getting them excited about what you're talking about and get an appointment is what you want to do. Okay, you want to keep your powder dry. You want, if, you're, if you've told everything and then you come back and you say the exact same stuff, the customer is going to be like, well, why did we have to meet again? Because you already told me all this, right? But if you keep your powder dry and tell them as little amount of information and then come back with all these, this ammo, of like, oh, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this, then you're, you're in a stronger position, okay? So um, say as little as you possibly can by, while still getting the appointment. But I'll recap after I've said the dead in the hospital. is like, okay, so just to quickly review, we'll, we'll, we'll come. Lee will be here. He'll go through all the options, talk to you about the different programs. Won't cost you anything up front unless you've got an extra 30 grand laying around. You'll instantly be locked in at a, at a better rate and uh, something usually people are pretty excited about. Then I have them tell me the appointment time, okay? And this is one of the times where I allow it to be socially awkward. I'll say to them, okay, cool. And so, so he'll be back here tonight at, and I'll point and I'll wait and I'll pause. Six o'clock, six o'clock. I'll let it be socially awkward for, for, that, for them to confirm the time. There was a study by a dentist office, by multiple dentist office, that said, that the, the study was about people keeping appointments. <laughs> and the appointment, the, there was a 16% higher chance that people would keep the appointment if they wrote down the time instead of the receptionist writing down the time. So usually the receptionist gives you the card and says, okay, you're gonna be here May 15th at 9 a.m and gives it to you, people are more likely to keep the appointment if she says, now why don't you write down the time on the card? Not that much different. But what, what, but what is the difference? They, they're doing it, right? It's coming from them. 
okay? So when, instead of me saying, yeah, okay, so he'll be back here tomorrow night at six, like, okay, so he'll be back here tomorrow at six, six o'clock, perfect. Now it's come from their mouth, it, they said it, not me, right? It's their word, not my word, right? Small little thing, but it's helped my appointment stick more. <clears throat> I'm sorry, thank you so much for your time. Uh, from an appointment setting position mindset, I've helped myself by realizing that people schedule appointments for all sorts of things, all sorts of times, and they don't make it. Go see a house, they don't make it. Go see a new car, they don't make it. Go to the baby shower, they don't make it. They like to say they're going to in the moment, but things come up, life happens. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, uh, life happens, it's going to happen. So what we got to do is we got to be put things in place like telling them death is involved and having them having them say the time to confirm that this is a real thing, right? So that's what we've got to do because people will set appointments all the time that they don't keep. And that's because we're not as good with our word as we should be as humans, right? Uh, we, apparently in this office we have these like Totally. That's exactly the dental office experience. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the appointment card. Actually, why don't you write down? Why don't you write down? The, and then it's like, oh man, I'm committing to this. Dude, they're just writing on a piece of paper. It's no different than if I were to, but, but to them, it kind of is, right? Because it's them doing it. Yep. Okay. All right, that wraps up the, I jumped up to that one that was on the list, but I'm coming back here to some mental mindset stuff. So, um, and how long do we have again? How long do you guys want me to keep going? I can go for hours. So as long as you want, I mean, up to 12.30 if you want. Okay. Up to 12.30? Yeah. So we only got 40 minutes? All right, here we go, here we go. I'm up here wrestling. I'm going to wrestle in the U.S. Open tomorrow. I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat some people up. Literally, she's wrestling in the U.S. And they're going to beat me up, and it's going to be a great time. Um... So, okay, everybody wants what I have. They want control. They want to save their money. The, there's three things I feel like you have to have to be successful in this job. I, I thought about coming in. I learned one time, I can't remember the guy, but some billionaire dude walked into an auditorium of college kids, packed house, um, 20,000 people there or something like that, and he said, who in here thinks they're going to change the world? Who in here has got something that's going to change the world? And there was like three or four people that raised their hands and he called them down to the front. And he said, all right, everybody else can leave. I'm gonna spend my time with these guys. <laughs> and everybody, everybody was like, what, and like mad? But he was, dead, he was dead serious, he was sincere, and everybody else left and he spent time with three people or, or whoever said that they were gonna change the world, right? I thought about, but I didn't wanna shortchange you, I thought about walking in here and saying, I, I know the secret to success in this job is hard work. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that same kind of concept, but then I decided I didn't want to do that to you. So, but that is that. That's it. The the I'm I've gotten good at selling. I've gotten good at creating appointments. I've gotten good at reading people's body language. What I really am, I'm a professional body language reader. That's what I've become. Within seconds of knocking on somebody's door, I can kind of know what's going on in their, in their life and in their day and kind of the person that they are. That's who I've become. And that's a really cool skill to have. But hard work wins all of the time. You don't have to be crazy talented. You do have to have crazy work ethic to succeed. That's it. If you want to win at this job, you have to work hard, you have to work the hours, and you have to be bought into that. I think there's three things that you need to have to be successful here. You need to work the hours and not shortchange short your hours. You need to have a positive attitude, and you need to be committed. Commitment to some people is like, I'm going to try this out for like two or three months. That's not commitment to me. I'm in this for a year. I'm going to be here April 26th, 2023, no matter what. You act differently when you're all in like that. I'm in it for five years. I'm in it until the wheels fall off. Solar is the best place where you can, it's just, it's such fantastic money. And we're doing so much good for so many people. Everybody wins. Not many things are that way. We have that, that's incredible. I love it. 
So I'm going to be here for a really long time. I'm in. When crap hits the fan and you have a hard day or a hard week or a hard month and you're in for a year, not in just to try this out, you're going to figure crap out to make this work. And this works. The only time that this doesn't work, the only time that this doesn't work is when you stop working. That's it. If you stop working, then this stops, then this stops working. You just have to keep working. I believe that 10% of the people out there today are looking for what we have. They're actively in the market for what we're doing. They may or may not tell you that, and they might tell you that. I knocked on the door in, in, Chicago, or, uh, in South Carolina, knocked on the door Charleston. The guy opened the door and he said, hey, look, are you guys solar guys? And, and that sometimes is like, I got to overcome an objection. But, and I was about ready to, and he's like, because if you are, I'm, I'm interested. I want to get it. <laughs> well, yes, we are. <laughs> right? And he said, because I'm smart. I want to get it because I'm smart. I'm like, well, yeah, OK. I can, feed, I can feed into that, right? So 10% so of the people are in the market right now ready for it. And they're out there actively looking. 10% of the people will never buy from you at the door. Never. We got a family rule. What that means is that they got hosed by somebody at the door, right? We got a family. Has anybody had a family rule? We got a family rule. We won't buy from a door-to-door -door salesperson. 10% of people will never buy from you, and 80% of the people is where our talent and skill comes in, where we help them to, to get across the finish line, right? So if you work hard enough, you're going to find 10%. You're going to find people that are actively looking for it right here, right now, and you'll have success in this job. So don't stop, OK? Keep going. Yeah, one of the, one of the pullbacks is, I'll say is, hey, look, this isn't something that you have to do. It is something that utilities have to do. They have to have a certain amount of people that have renewable energy by, and you guys have a government mandate. Every state does. I don't know what your government mandate is. Do you know? 50% by 2030. So you don't have to do it. But they have to have 50% of their customers have renewable power by 2030. Someone's going to get a discount to keep their fridge plugged in. You guys got a fridge? <laughs> Might as well get a discount to keep your fridge plugged in, right? That's kind of what I, that's why I'm here, right? So I'll reference, I'll reference that. You don't have to do it. Somebody's going to do it, though, and somebody's going to get a discount to keep their fridge plugged in. Might as well be you. That's kind of how I look at it. Why don't you go grab your bill? Um, <laughs> that's my main pullback, Sam. I don't, really, I don't really do it. A lot of other pullbacks, yeah. Yeah. It's the money, huh? It's money. Can you tell me how? It's disgusting. Oh. Every single person starts spewing, spewing everything. everything. So it makes them believe, like, okay, this is great. They're you in. Know, it's like They're all in. Back, right back yep. Like, yep. Again, coming out of their mouth. It's yeah. their word, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you guys all know what Sam's talking about? No. My three part closing question, and I'm all over the place, but I'm just going to keep spitting at you guys. It's all gold. It's all good. Three part closing question is at the end of the at the end of the close when after i've shown them the numbers if, if you've shown somebody numbers never ask them do you have any questions okay if you've done your job properly you've answered all their questions and if you say do you have any more questions they're going to be like uh that makes me think i should have a question and i don't have a question so why don't we why don't we think about it we'll just think about it right and you don't want that they, they really are ready you just ask a question at the wrong time so if they say after if you show them the numbers, I'll stop, I'll look up, and I'll say, okay, let me just make sure we covered everything. We talked about what happens if you move, what happens at the end of 25 years. Okay, yeah. So can you see how this would benefit you and your family? Can you guys see how this would benefit you guys? However you want to, however you want to say that? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me how? Oh, it saves so much money. That's the money question. Uh, I get tax credit, fixed rate payment. Honey, what do you think? It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. And then the final, like my wrap up that is like, okay, well, cool. If we can, if we can 
get you that where it doesn't cost you anything and you get that fixed payment, can you see any reason not to do it? So with a little bit of a duh face, like, can you see any reason not to do it? <laughs> duh. So the three part close was, can you see how this would benefit you and your family? Can you tell me how? And then you, you spit back to them what they just spit back to, said to you, right? If we can blank, blank, take two or three of the things that they just said, can you see any reason not to do it? No. That just, that just closes it up. They're all in. They've said it out of their mouth. Now it's their word, not your word. Some people will assume the sale the whole time, and I'm assuming the sale, hey, this is what happens when your bill change, you know, your bill turns from a bill to a statement, and da, 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 and this is where your panels will go, and I'm, I'm using ownership language the whole time. But I believe, and I sold alarms, and I sold satellites, and I love, 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 love using soft closing questions to get, guide people through the sale. A soft closing question is a, is a question that you ask that you get an answer that isn't a yes or a no, but gets you closer to the sale, okay? Where would you put the panels? We'd probably put them over here. They didn't say they were in yet, but they did think a little bit closer to, I'm in, right? And auto payment, whatever, whatever the questions are. I, I love doing that with people. Like, what, what would you do with the money that you're saving, right? How, do you, how does it feel to have a fixed mortgage? Like, great, right? Have you ever had a variable mortgage? It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah, right? I'm just, just softly just guiding them along. Hey, we're gonna get solar today, okay? And, and asking all these questions, but I do believe that it's a more solid sale if you can get them to say they're in. Because sometimes people will be like, okay, cool, well, we'll just pull up the credit application and they don't ask a good question. Can you see how it's going to benefit you? Can you tell me how to get them to say I'm in? And we, they have enough time to cancel. It's not like we're showing up 30 minutes later to punch a hole in their wall and put an alarm in. They've got time to cancel. So if we, if we can have them just put the nail in their own coffin by them saying I'm in, it's better for us. Okay? Okay, good. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, I talked about shark in the water. There's a shark in the water. Um, talked about a positive mental mindset. One thing I'll, I, will, I will say that I've, I've thought about uh, a number of different times, and it happened to me like a couple months ago, is the, the, the skills that you learn from this job will 100% transfer to the rest of your life and will benefit you a ton. A couple months ago, I had a couple sick daughters and a sick wife, and my three-year-old comes in at like three in the morning. I haven't slept a whole lot, and she says that she just threw up. And I could be like, oh my God, are you serious? Or I could be like this. I've seen this before. It's called 110 degrees after five hours of knocking. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ruth. Let me help you. That skill of resilience and being positive in the face of adversity is going to pay off so much in your life. Because crap will hit the fan lots of times in your life, right? And my daughter's being sick and whatever, whatever life situations. And you can choose to approach it like, I got this. I've been here before. Or, man, my life sucks. It's horrible. It's a choice. It's, a, it's completely a choice. You get to choose how you react every single day on the doors and in these closes all the time. Right? So you get to choose that. that that'll be a, val a valuable, valuable thing for the rest of your life. OK, I want to talk about, let's see, let's see. Um, so having a positive mental mindset, working the hours. Another thing that I want to have, I, me personally, and this doesn't have to be you, but I personally like to just show up like a regular dude in the neighborhood. I don't wear anything flashy, I'm just wear like regular stuff, right? I, I do drive a Tesla, but I try to park around the corner and so I'm not like, hey, you see my car? Like I just, I'm just a regular dude in the neighborhood. I want them to think that I'm a meter reader and I have to be there, okay? Phrases that have worked really well for me in markets that have been knocked a lot like this is, I have, to be, I have to be here. I have to talk to everyone. I'm required, okay? I have to be required. Those have been really impactful for me, okay? Like, no, dude, you're like the fifth guy that's come here this last month. Like, I, I completely understand. I'm, I actually have to talk to, the program I'm working on, I have to talk to everybody eventually. It can be right now, it can be later, but I do have to talk to everybody eventually. 
or if it's a son or daughter, be like, oh, my parents are interested. Like, I do have to talk to the homeowner eventually. I have to. I haven't talked to them yet. It's on, and you can show them Canvas. I haven't talked to them yet, and and uh, and I need to talk to everybody about this program. Okay. I've had people starting to shut the door on me when I tell them I have to talk to them. And I'll be kind. I believe if you respect people, they're going to respect you. Okay. If somebody's legit in the middle of dinner, or cooking dinner, or there's kids running around, or whatever, and they're like they, you can sense that. There's real action going on. I could bulldoze through and maybe get an appointment, but, but if I say, like, I'm, I'm doing my pitch, and like, right now is just not the best time. Like, I, I, it looks like it. It looks like I get your hands full. I can come back later. I can come back in maybe like an hour or something like that. Should I do that? And they say, yeah. Then they've told me to come back. When I come back, if they try to rush me off again, I, I push it back on them, right? Oh, actually, do you remember you told me to come back? Because you were busy before? Like, oh yeah, now what is this? Like, they're going to listen to me because I respected them the first time, right? And then I told them, remember, you told me to come back? This is, this is you, not me. This is, I'm just fulfilling your request, right? Because I'm a pro and I work my area and I work my neighborhood. I don't just burn through places. I'll take good notes. I know where I've been. I know who I've talked to, right? And I take really good notes in Canvas. So, um, but I, but I, uh, what was, I was going to say one other thing with that. What was I going to say? Regular guy in the neighborhood. Respect them. Just turned 40. Some things kind of <laughs> sometimes move out of my head. What was I going to say? I have to talk to everyone. Thank you. Tell them you have to be, you have to be there. Okay? I have to talk to you eventually. It doesn't have to be right now. It can be later, but I do have to talk to some. I do have to talk to you eventually. What usually happens with that is people will be like, now what is this? Okay, because that's, that's, I guess, kind of a pullback. I'm like, I don't, it doesn't have to be right now, but I do have to eventually talk to you. It could be now, it could be later. What would be better for you? Like it, I can, and then I'll use this hand signal. You guys seeing that in my trainings at all? Maybe, maybe not. What does this hand signal mean? Uni universally, not in the doors, but what does this universally mean? A little bit. A little, little, little small. We've been trained our whole lives that this means little and small, right? So I use that to my advantage. That's, I'm, I'm reaching to people's subconscious all the time and be like, oh, I'll just give you the quick version. And they're like, oh, it's just the small. Okay, yeah, I, can, I got enough time for that, <laughs> right? So I'll flash this hand signal a lot and it buys me extra time. I, I feel like I'm just trying to get to 30 seconds on the door. If I can get to 30 seconds of my pitch on the door, then they'll give me the whole pitch, okay? If I don't get to 30 seconds of my pitch, then there's a higher chance of me getting kicked off the door, okay? So tricks to get to 30 seconds is I have to be here, I'm required to be here, and then this hand signal. Now I don't go up to the door and like knock on the door and be like, hey, how's it going? My name's Ashton, <laughs> right? Like that's not how I start my pitch, <laughs> but I'll flash it. If I can tell somebody's like, oh, man, okay, what is this? Or they're like, like do, you, do you want me to just give you the fast version? I can just give you the quick version. Yeah, what is it? And my quick version is the same as my long version. I actually have a longer version, but I just use my same, my normal pitch, right? By, by using yeah, that. Words out of your mouth. Is this solar? Um, is this solar? Yeah. Do you want me to tell you how I overcome, yeah. is this solar? So if somebody comes at me with, is this solar? There's something that's going on. They're putting up a wall, right? And if you say yes, they're like, I knew it. And if you say no, they're like, you liar, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't say yes or no. What I do is I come back with a question to get the wall down. Okay, so I'm usually holding like my binder. If somebody's like, man, is this solar? I'd be like, oh man, you guys get hit from people trying to like make you pay cash for solar panels all the time, right? Or like lease you panels, right? So I use a little eight mile principle on them. What they're trying to tell me when they say, is this solar? What they're really saying is like, dude, if they haven't already said, we have people come by here all the time. I get phone calls, I get people knocking my door all the time, so if I can beat them to it, it's socially awkward for them to come back and say, well, I just have people come by and try to sell me a phone calls. I just told you that, yeah, you can't, you kind of can't come back and say that to me, okay? So it's just like, oh man, you guys get hit from people trying to make you pay cash for solar panels all the time, like lease you panels, right? Pause and wait. They're gonna say, right. It's like, oh, well, this isn't that. We utilize solar panels as a resource, but let me explain it to you. That will make me lots of money in time. 
So I do, I do say we use solar panels, and my pitch is slower. It's a, I, I'm, I'm a little slower than my normal speed, and I pull them into me. The only time I speed up is when I say, well, uh, we utilize solar panels as a resource, but let me just explain it to you. So I'm a little bit faster there, right? So I, I spit out. If they come back if later in the cell, they're like, hey, I thought you said you didn't do solar, like it wasn't solar panels. I said, I, I told you we utilize solar panels as a resource, but, but you don't have to pay, pay cash for them, right? And my words are very intentional. I'm not knocking on people's doors trying to make them pay cash for solar, and I'm not trying to lease them solar panels. Am I trying to sell them solar panels? Yes, through a loan that costs no money down. Right, so I don't say, yeah, people are trying to come by and like make you get a loan for solar panels, like no money down, right? Because that's me, right? I can't do that. I can't, yeah, liar. I can't say that, but I'm very intentional with my words. I'm not, but maybe somebody has cash and I'll let them buy it cash from me too, right? But, but that's how I overcome that, okay? So when I say, and, and important words to say with that is this isn't that, okay? Because that's gonna help pull the wall down. Oh, you guys get that, okay. You, you, that's, that's what happens, right? They're trying to do that, right? Yeah, okay, well this isn't that. We utilize solar panels as a resource, but let me just explain it to you, okay? By saying this isn't that, it helps to bring the wall down. We utilize solar panels as a resource, might like inch it back up just a little bit, but my hand signal will bring it back down because it's just gonna give me the fast version. Okay? Make sense, are there any questions on any of that? Yeah? I can do my whole pitch. Yeah, I'll do my whole pitch. Yeah. I'm guessing it's different. Just like most of us, if you have someone saying, is it solar? Someone's like, hey, how are you? Yeah. Why don't we do this? Because um, I'm going to make sure that we get that. Why don't we um, do the pitch right now, right this very second? I'll do two pitches. I'll have a, like a lay down easy one. So you can see like the full thing as, uh, as if it was really easy and then as hard as you want. Are you gonna be my customer? Okay, so you can be, you can be easy, that'd be easy the first time and then be as hard as you want, but I'm gonna get my binder because you practice, you play how you practice. <laughs> Who's gonna do the hard customer? Misty. Misty? Oh boy, oh boy. I feel like if I caught Misty at the door, I'd probably sell her and then I'd become Lee's best friend. <laughs> Would you look at that? Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Record when you want. Five, four, three, two. Hey, what's up, man? Hey man, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? Doing great. Cool. It's a beautiful day out, man. That's nice out here. Yeah, love your truck outside. I, I thought I would trade you your truck for mine straight up. Well, you got it. I actually don't have one, so it'd be a bad, <laughs> bad deal for you. Yeah, but what I'm doing real quick, um, I've been required to talk to everybody about the power project. Some people know about it, others don't. Do you know anything about it at all? Is it the solar? Uh, you, you guys probably get hit from people trying to like pay a solar, like make you pay cash for solar panels all the time. Stuff like that, right? I mean, or, or I've heard about it. I really haven't talked to anybody about it, so I don't understand what the power project is. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not here to make you pay cash for solar panels. But what the, what the power project is, is we, um, sorry, what the power project is, it just has to do with how the power gets to the houses. Okay. All the utility companies have been mandated to have 50% of their power be renewable by 2030. Okay. And so now for owners that qualify and houses that qualify, you can actually get a discount off of your bill. Do you study your bill very much? Do you know kind of how it works? Not really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just got to pay it, right? Just pay that thing, it's, uh, yeah, I, I completely understand. Well, let me show you this. So there's, there's a whole bunch of fees on the bill. Okay. So for this person, they paid $135 for their bill to actually make the power and stuff was, was not that there was a whole bunch of extra fees and stuff like that. There's actually, even here, there's a renewable energy program. Mm -hmm. Um, NV energy is charging their loyal customers money for other people to go solar which is kind of crazy, so you're getting charged. You're getting charged for that, which is kind of crazy. So what the program is, if you guys qualify and the house qualifies, we can actually wipe out these fees, and then you get grandfathered into a rate that's around 2,000, 2,001 rates. And the, my favorite part about it is that it's, it, it never goes up. Well, basically never. It's like 25 years, like exact same payment, lower than what you spend right now. What does it take to qualify? 
Well, so, and, and it's a renewable power program. So renewable power util, utilizes, it, it comes either from the wind, the sun, or rivers. Mm -hmm. The county doesn't want us to put in windmills, and you don't have a river in your backyard. No, we don't. So we utilize solar panels as the resource, but you don't have to pay cash for them or lease them. You just have to qualify, like I mentioned. So to qualify, you have to have three things. You gotta be using at least like 40, 50 bucks a month. What do you guys normally spend? We're more than that. We're probably in the summers, we're like 250, and then in the winter, we're like 120. Okay, sometimes even 80. Some people in this neighborhood have been even that low. A little sometimes, maybe one month out of the year. Okay, cool. So you're good there. Second thing you have to have is a decent roof. I wouldn't have knocked on your door if I didn't think it was in good enough shape, but do you know how old it is, roughly? Um, probably not more than, I mean, the house was built eight years ago, so not too old. Okay, totally good. Uh, and then the last thing you have to have is decent credit. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be over 650. Is your guys' credit pretty good? Yeah, it's really good. It's good? Okay, awesome. Well, I love my job. My job is easy. What I do is I, I create a customized brochure for your guys' house. Mm -hmm. The way that I do that is I get a picture of your usage for the last year. I take, just take a, take a picture of that, mm -hmm. plug it into some software. It'll spit back exactly what you qualify for. Mm -hmm. Then we can sit down, go through it. Okay. Are you married or got a significant other? Married. Married, awesome. Me too. It's a great thing to be. It is. Um, so we'd schedule time to sit down with you and your wife, go through it. If it makes sense, you can get enrolled. If it doesn't make sense, you don't have to do it. But it's not rocket science. If you can get a lower bill and have it never go up, that's usually something people would want to do. Um, so in order to do that, I get a copy of your bill. Do you guys get your bill online or do you get it in the mail? I get it in the mail. You get in the mail? Do you want to go grab it real fast? Okay. There it is. Yep. Yep, perfect. Looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like you guys would qualify. Man, those summer months are pretty high, huh? Mm -hmm. Let me just take a quick picture of the bill. Okay. Awesome. So like I said, it looks like you'll, you guys would qualify and if your credit's good enough, um, what I'll do is I'll plug the numbers in. It's usually better for me, where's your bill back? It's usually better for me uh, to come back within like 24 to 48 hours and like either before like 12 or after 7, 7.30. I can come back tonight. Are you guys around tonight? If I came back at like 7.30? Does my wife have to be here? Yeah, they want to have both everybody there. What time did you say? 7.30 yeah, or 8? We'll, we'll be here at 7.30. And that, that would be a good time. You'd be able to focus. Yeah, and kids will be getting ready for bed. Yeah. yeah. Should we do 8 or 8.30? Uh, would that be better? Good. 8? Yeah. How long does it take? It just depends on how many questions you've got. Okay. Um, 45 minutes could be an hour and a half. It really just depends on yeah, how many right. questions you, you guys have. Tonight. Yeah, tonight at 8. All right. Um, I didn't even get your name. What's your name? Lee. Lee. Yeah. Ashton. Good to meet you. What's, um, what's your last name, Lee? Barber. Barber. Mm -hmm. And what's your wife's name? Misty, with the Y or I? M-I-S-T, uh, Y. Y, okay. Um, and what's a good cell phone, cell phone number for you? 702-417-9000. Okay, and an email address? Uh, Achilles War 1 at Gmail. Achilles? Achilles. Dude, you better spell that for me. A-C-H-I-L-L-E-S. Okay. War 1 at Gmail. Okay, solid. Um, so I've got you in here. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll punch these numbers in. And just plan on me showing up. I'm not going to call or text in advance. I'll, I'll be here unless I'm dead or in the hospital. Okay. And let's pray I'm not dead or in the hospital. <laughs> but just, just plan on me being here at that time. Okay. Uh, we'll go through it. Like I mentioned, if you guys can qualify, you can get in locked at that lower rate okay. and have your bill never go up. Okay. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I think you guys will be pretty dang excited. So we'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Cool. Great to meet you, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, go, go as hard as you want. Go as hard as you want. Go as hard as you want. Okay, I'll be myself. Now you're in trouble. Okay. 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 High buying threshold. High buying threshold? No. Neither is my wife. She's, uh, she's not into it. Unless it's Lululemon. Should I start with that? Should I say, are you, are you Lululemon buyer? <laughs> Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Go as hard as you want. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's good. I don't have time for this. Are you another solar guy? Oh, man, you guys get hit up from a lot of people trying to say if, like, solar panels make you pay cash and, like, lease solar panels, right? Uh, right. I don't even yeah. really give them the time of day, though. I don't have that much okay, time. Okay, cool. Well, I'm not, I'm not making you pay cash for solar. Let me just kind of give you the, the fast version of what I'm doing. So okay. I'm required to talk to everybody about the power project. Some people know about it. Others don't. Do you know anything about it at all? 
No, I mean my no. neighbor. I saw my neighbor. It looked like a shit show over there. I see the <laughs> pigeons. I'm just. I'm good. We're good. You're, you're still only... talking about the solar? Yeah. The yeah. Solar, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So I'm not making you pay cash. Let me just kind of I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll give you the fast version. So it just has to do with how the power gets to the houses. All the utility companies have to have 50% of their customers have renewable power by 2030. Okay. And so now for owners that qualify and houses that qualify, you can actually get the renewable power here on site. And then what you get is you get rid of a bunch of the fees off of the bill. Mm -hmm. Have you studied the bill at all? Do you know kind of how it works? You know what, my bill's like 150 a month. I don't even, I honestly Not a big deal. pay attention. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so the program, so basically you get rid of those fees uh, to qualify for the program. You got to be paying at least like 40 bucks. Yeah. So you pay more than that, like every month. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What's the catch though? What? Nothing's free. Do you want me to tell you the catch? Yeah. What's yeah. The catch? Yeah. Totally. Nothing's free. The catch with the program is that you still have a power bill. Do you guys have a fridge? I do. Yeah. Do you plan on always having a fridge? Yeah. I hope so. Do you think you'd, your fridge would want a discount to like keep your fridge plugged in? <laughs> or you'd want a discount to keep your fridge plugged in? Yeah, I don't know anybody that wouldn't want a discount to keep their yeah. fridge plugged in, so that's what I'm doing. Okay. So the program, as long as you qualify, then, and, and the, but the catch is that you still have a power bill, it's just gonna be a lot less than what you're spending. And then my favorite part is that it never goes ever. It, it basically is locked in for like 25 years, your bill, and then it goes away, which is yeah, also pretty cool. Thing. Like my girlfriend at work, she told me that she did solar, uh -huh. and um, she had two large bills, which she was like, oh, oh totally not even worth it. And yeah, I'm like, totally. Why would you, why would you go solar to yeah. have a bigger power bill? So you're saying there is a power bill. The power, so unfortunately for your friend, she didn't use me okay. because she wouldn't definitely have two big bills. Okay. Um, I would never put you in a situation where you'd pay more oh, for so what you're paying now. So it was, or... yeah, either the rep wasn't good or they, or they just didn't understand. Sometimes yeah. people think it's like it, it, it goes forever and you can just crank the AC and then yeah. leave the windows and doors open. That's not how the program works. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is like, you're the first guy that I've actually even give the time of day to. Awesome. And just like Thank you, you said, the, it might've been her rep or something like, what well, makes you different? Because I have six or seven that are just pounding on my door constantly. Yeah, yeah the fastest way to get rid of them is that we sit down and talk through the program. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fastest way. Okay. So what, what makes what makes the program different mm -hmm. is the um, like you, you, you're, you're like I said, your bill never goes up. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. Now it's not unlimited. If the program was and we utilize solar panels, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. you don't have to buy them. You don't have to lease them. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to maintain. I mean, you don't have to, I'm sorry, you don't have to pay cash for them. Right. Uh, you don't have to lease them. You don't have to maintain them. You just have to qualify for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you qualify, then your, your payment's exactly the same all of the time. Now, if solar panels were unlimited, everybody would buy one solar panel and crank the AC all day, every day. So right. you can't go crazy with it, which you probably wouldn't. But mm -hmm. anyway, so the, 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 the program, like I mentioned, we use solar panels because the county doesn't want us to put in windmills and you don't have a river in your backyard. So we utilize solar, we get tons of sun. Really here in Arizona, like we should all have solar. It just looks weird sometimes on some people's houses and uh, it costs yeah. a lot of money, right? You guys probably don't have an extra 30 grand laying around. Yeah. So, and I mean, you're going to be poking holes in my roof. That kind of sketches me out, you know? I yeah. had a couple horror stories from a few friends. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I know, I'm good. Totally I totally understand. You know, like too much risk, it seems like. Yeah. There's a lot of risk involved. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 again, the program that I'm working on, okay. we, we, that's all maintained, like that's all, there's warranties around that. Okay, so you'd be, you'd be protected against that and too bad your friends didn't go through me. So the, let me just tell you how you qualify. So to qualify, you have to have three things. You gotta be using at least 40 bucks a month on the bill. You said you guys were over that. Yep. You have to have a decent roof. Uh, your roof looked like it was in good enough shape, but do you know how old it is? Like five years. Five years, okay, so you're good it's there. pretty much new, that's why I don't want it right Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So we would protect all of that. Okay. And then the last thing you have to have is decent credit. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be over 650. Is your guys' credit pretty good? Yeah, great credit. Great credit, cool, awesome. Well, I love my job, my job is easy. What I do is I create a customized brochure. You can't enroll for anything right this second. What I do is create a customized brochure for your house. In order to do that, what I get is a picture of your bill. That will show you like your winter habits, your summer habits, plug that information in some software. It'll spit back exactly what you qualify for. Then we can get together. Are you married or have a significant other? Just you. I'm awesome. Boss. boss lady. That's what I'm talking about. So no, nobody else on the, no, on the title of the house or anything me. like that? Just you. Cool. It makes it even easier. So I plug that in and then we'll, I'll come back, sit down with you, go through the numbers. If it makes sense to get enrolled, you can get enrolled. If it doesn't make sense, you don't have to do it. But it's not yeah, rocket I'm science. I'm open to listening. You know, I just, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't buy stuff on the first time. Like yeah, I, totally. I like to do my research. Totally. So I'm just going to be straight up and honest yeah. with you. I plan on doing research. Love it. Yeah. So a lot of what I do is I help 
cut a lot of the research. What I'll do is I'll actually put it out for bid for a few different a few different places okay. and then come back with one that I think is going to be best for you that gives you the best protections. People want to be protected, yeah. gives you the best overall deal, give you the lowest price. Okay. You, you're, you may find cheaper solar panels from a dude up the street that these are, you know, some crappy Cheap panels. Yeah. yeah. Or, or even good panels, but they'll be here today, gone tomorrow. I'm not that guy. Okay. I'm going to be here. What and company were you with you? Legacy. Okay. Yeah. Never heard of them. Yeah. Legacy is the largest privately held solar company in the country. So it's pretty, wow. pretty sweet. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. So anyway, um, do you get your bill online or do you get it in the mail? How do you get your I bill? Have it on the counter. Do you want to go grab it real fast? Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like you'd be a good candidate. Let me just take a quick picture of that. Okay. And what was that for? So I can plug in these numbers um, okay. for, the, for the software. The, the, only, the worst thing I can do with your bill is pay it, and I promise I'm not going to pay your bill, okay? Oh, well, I'm here. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it looks like you qualify. They, it's usually better for me to come back like after 7.30 or before like noon. I could come back later on tonight or tomorrow. What would be better? Um, probably tomorrow. I mean, yeah, 7.30 is a little late for me, but yeah, okay. it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow probably be all right. Yeah. Like 11 o'clock or what time would be best? Uh, yeah, sometime in the evening. Around? Um, just like... Five or six. Five or six. I mean, I can do that tonight too. Are you gonna be around tonight? It's usually better I for am. me after seven thirty. But if if six o'clock worked, I could come at six. Tonight. If or tomorrow, either okay. one. Which yeah. would be better? Um, we can do tomorrow. At tomorrow. Six. At six. Okay. And I didn't even get your name. What's your name? Misty. Misty Ashton. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. What's your last name, Misty? Barber. Barber. And what's your cell phone number? Seven zero two. Okay. Four four nine seven nine five eight. Okay, and a good email address. Mmt two six two six at gmail. Okay, sweet. All right, so I got you in here at six tomorrow. Okay. I'll go through the numbers. I won't put you through the ringer. Sounds like you've had lots of people come through. I don't need to put you through the ringer, but I'll just go through all the, the most commonly asked questions. I'm if it makes sense, you, I got do it. A lot of questions. Game on. Bring them. Bring okay. it. Yeah, I'll have. I'll be as ready as I I need to be. Cool. And. Uh, and then if it makes sense, you can get enrolled. And if it doesn't make sense, you can't get enrolled. So no pressure. Right? Um, no pressure. Yeah, so, I don't want to be pressured into buying something. Yeah, yeah. I hate pushy sales guys. I'm not one of those guys. So okay. I'll come back tomorrow at 6. 6 o'clock. OK, great to meet you. Thanks. Have a good one. Yep. She was too easy. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, um, let's rehash that. What, talk to me. Talk to me about things you guys saw. You didn't. See, you saw that you liked. Saw that you think would be different. Or questions about why did you do that? Why did you say this? Let's talk about it. You use lots of nonverbal things like you're not going to have enough for pain signals, and you don't want them shaking your head. So they're like feeding into you, and they almost, you know, they they know you know what they're going to say because they're kind of feeding them into it. Yeah. And they're saying it because you want them to, so you're getting them to agree with you without even knowing that you're basically giving them. To Right. Gently, gently just holding her hand. You're coming along with me. Let's do this. Yep. A lot of it was just your, it's hard to explain, but I see that you're absorbing the objection in a way that it just moves right past you and you overcome it, not necessarily, you acknowledge it, but overcome it with just like the roof, like, no, that, that's covered. No, nope, we're legacy. We're the confident. Legacy. It's just very short amount of words and it just, relays bounces it back into them like that's not relevant because we are because i am too bad because she didn't use because so the objection is just getting absorbed and bounced back with like confidence and just overcoming it just by really good you know, good yeah confidence yeah your terminology is just great like it's just like like what we say it's just no big deal like mm -hmm. oh yeah no big deal you know, like, and move on, move on. Don't, like, get into it. Don't talk about it too much. Don't dive in. Go to the rabbit hole. Yeah. Move on. I love that. And I love how you really push for the same day. That was good. Just easy. It's just, like, I just love it. It's just, you're just so smooth. Yeah. It's great. What I found, I used to try to schedule appointments within 48 hours, and next day appointments were, like, fine. Mm -hmm. But as I've done this more, the closer to my first interaction to them, that I can set the appointment, the better it is for me when it's fresh on their mind. So within, if I can try, I try to schedule something within 24 hours if I can help it. 48 hours is still good, but best is 24 hours, right? And even bester is like 
tonight or an hour, right? I'll come back in an hour. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And I'll use a handwritten note to make sure that it's really solid appointment. Yeah. So in the um, event that you do schedule 48 hours, are you like popping by and like, or doing anything following up? I know you say you don't have to verify your, your If it's longer than 48 hours? Yeah. So I use a handwritten note to solidify my appointments. If it's not, if it's, if I always try to get it within 48 hours. Say it's, what's today, Tuesday? Yeah. They're like, oh, next Tuesday is the only time I can work, that can work. I'll write them a handwritten note between now and next Tuesday, and I'll put a $2 bill in it, and I'll say, whatever the building rapport was, hey, thanks for talking to me for, you know, appreciate your dog not eating me or whatever. Then I look forward to meeting with you next week, at, uh, next Tuesday at such and such time. I'm confident if, uh, I'm confident that if you decide to enroll with us, not only will you have a great customer experience, but save lots of $2 bills for years to come, put my card in there and a $2 bill, and I send that to them, my closing percentage goes way up if I can get a handwritten note to them before I sit down with them. And if I, if I can't, and so I, I, it's worked so well that I've even considered like booking all my appointments for 72 hours away so that I can get a handwritten note to them before I show up. Because when I show up and my letter's on the, on the table with the $2 bill there, that's a deal. And sorry, did you say you mail that? Yeah, and I put it in the mail. I don't go back to their house. I don't go knock on their door and give it to them or slip it in there. I put a stamp on it, cost me 52 cents, and I send it. People, I love getting crap in the mail. People love getting stuff in the mail, right? But not, but when's the last time you got a handwritten letter from somebody in the mail? That wasn't grandma or mom, right? Like the last person that did was your mom or your grandma, and that was a while ago. Right, so what door to door salesperson does that? I, I, I do. Not very many people do, but I do. Right? Yeah, yeah. The one thing I, I do want to just bring up on this is something that we always forget in the sales cycle, and you do it every time, is at the end of every single one of your interactions, you rehash the, the page once. Hmm. I noticed that in both of your pitches, you were like, cool, whatever they said that they liked, you're like, cool, awesome. So, I'm going to be coming back showing you how we can save you money and get that rate fixed for you. And then you, you say goodbye right after that. It's like giving on a high note. Yeah. That right there is like 20% of the entire term. Yeah, yeah. Just that rehash. Good call out. <laughs> Love it. What else? Any other thoughts or questions about what I said? Well, I have a question about something. I have yeah. a friend that um, she likes the idea of solar, but she thinks having solar panels on the roof is like toxic. Mm. So I'm just wondering if that's ever something you've run into or. Because when she said that to me, I was kind of like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. So, yeah. Has anybody ever said I have that? had that. I, it's, and some people, it's like it's something you can't overcome. But I have had people be like, oh, man, I heard those cause cancer or something. Like that. I'll, I'll say, what, what I'll try to do, if somebody gives me that kind of objection, like, oh, man, they're like bad for you and they're going to be toxic, I'll bring back, I'll be like, you know what? The actual sun will give you cancer more than these panels will. So as long as you're continuing to go out in the sun, you're gonna have less likelihood of having problems because you've got the panels. So I'll kind of bring it back to like, yeah, I totally, yeah, I mean, I totally get it. These are glass, your windows probably don't give you a concern, that's glass. The sun actually is gonna give, it's gonna be more toxic for you than the solar panels. They'll actually help protect you from the sun a little bit, your roof will get some shade, blah, 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 blah. But I, I bring it back to the sun. Do you plan on living with the sun for the next little while? Vegas, this is market specific, but I noticed that if you guys have noticed in Vegas, we have those fake trees, I think those 5G trees. Have you guys ever seen them? They look yes. fake as hell, it's crazy. So uh, everyone's seen them. So I just always bring that up when they say that. I'm like, I either crack a joke about the tinfoil hat. I'm like, did you forget the tinfoil hat and stuff? No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if it's with the 5G signals, the Wi Fi signals, and the power lines right above your house, I don't think the solar will be much of an issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, a couple things I want to point out that I said in there. I said the phrase, I love my job, my job is easy. I would encourage you to incorporate those two lines in your pitch no matter where your pitch is at. And, and I also forgot to say before I did my pitch that I usually will say is that my pitch is my way. It works for me. It may not be what you use, right? But take some things from what you heard and implement into what you use. That's what I would encourage you to do. But, and some of those is I love my job, my job is easy. People love to work with people that love what they do. When you go to the, a restaurant and somebody hates their job, your waiter or waitress hates their job, and you can tell, it's not that pleasant of an experience. If you go to the restaurant and you're working with a waitress or waiter that loves their job, and you can tell, it's like, this, isn't, this is pleasant. 
Like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming. You're gonna love, tonight, oh my gosh, you're gonna love the cinnamon rolls. You gotta get the cinnamon rolls, right? Or whatever, like you can, like man, this is, I, I enjoy this experience, okay? Whether you're having a, a, the best day of your life or not, I hope you do love your job because that one lead at the end of seven hours of knocking is worth about $3,000, right? So, so love, I love my job and then also my job is easy. Okay, people wanna do things that are easy. This is again appealing to the subconscious a little bit. Like, hey, this is easy. Little Jedi mind trick. Just go get your bill, it's easy. Right, that's what, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm kinda of trying to do in my, in my language. This is easy, it's, oh, it's easy. Yeah, just go, go grab your bill. The whole process is easy, I'll make it easy. Easy, 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 easy. It really is pretty easy, it can get gnarly. Sometimes people need a re-roof. Sometimes they need a new electrical panel and it could be harder but you tell them that it's easy because you still don't know. On the door, you don't know if it's gonna be hard or easy, but your experience with you is easy. I'm gonna make this very easy, okay? If you went to a car dealership and they were like, like, yeah, come buy the car, it's awesome. I mean, it takes like, honestly, buckle up. It's like six hours. <laughs> it's pretty dang hard. But we'll get you your car at the end of it. You're gonna be like, eh, maybe I'll go to the neighbor, right? But you go and the guy's like, yeah, it's, it's easy. Come on in, man. We'll take, we'll take care of you, even if it takes the exact same amount of time, right? So this is easy. I love my job. I also, so one thing that you maybe did or didn't notice is that I didn't take a picture. Uh, if I have an if I have an iPad, some people just knock with their phone. But if you ha if you knock with your iPad, I'd encourage you to take a picture of the bill with your iPad, not with your phone. Why? Trust. I can do, I can send these back and forth, but for whatever reason, people are like, oh, they got my personal information. Like, oh, he's just using his iPad, <laughs> right? But iPad is like, it's a, it's, a work, it's a work thing, it's a business thing. The phone is like, oh, what's he gonna do with my personal, is he gonna text it to his friend? I can text from my iPad, but, but it just feels different when it's on your phone, okay? And, and, and it's also okay on your phone, but I was just saying, if you have an iPad, if you carry an iPad with you, take a picture of the bill with your iPad, not with your phone. Um, some other things that I said or did, you saw I pointed and I had to make sure that they told me the time, I told them I would be dead or in the hospital. Did I say that to Misty? I don't know if I did. Dead or in the hospital, did I say that to you? No. I don't think I did. Um, I did to Lee. Um, fridge, I often reference the fridge. That's the most basic thing in the house. If somebody's like worried about moving, like well what happens if I move? Like, well, do you think the next people are gonna have a fridge? Do you think they would want a discount to keep their fridge plugged in? Awesome, they're gonna love this. Do you think they'll have cell phones? Perfect, they'll probably wanna use electricity. Right? You're, probably, you're not planning on going back to candles and flashlight? Great, okay? So I have referenced the fridge a lot when I'm overcoming objections. Like this is, I'm just boiling it down to dumb. I, I, and and the, other, the other thing that I wanted to say, and we can, we can get out of here because I'm over my time limit. The, other, the last thing I wanted to, to, not last thing, but one other thing I wanted to say from that is, I had a structure of my pitch. I always have the structure of my pitch in my head. Did you guys notice that Misty was taking me back and then I went back to where I was at in my story? You may, maybe didn't catch it, right? I'm working on, the, working on the power project, explain their bill a little bit, three ways to get renewable power, three things to qualify, go get your bill, schedule the appointment, okay? That's where I was going. Lee tried to get me to like, what do I have to do to qualify? But I, had, I hadn't told him there's three different ways to get renewable power yet. So I went back and I said, there's three different ways. There's three ways to get renewable power through the wind, the sun, or rivers. The county doesn't want us to put in windmills and you don't have a river in your backyard. <laughs> so we use solar panels. That introduces, now this is gonna be a solar project, right? Because then when I, when I go to qualify, if I, didn't, if I skip that step and I say, you need to have a good roof. And they're like, well, why do I need to have a good roof? If I haven't explained we're using solar panels, then it doesn't make sense for that, right? Sorry, Misty, what were you? No, every time you took me back to the cell cycle, so I tried to get you out, get you out, get you out, and you just kept going right back to that. And so it, it kind of gave me the impression like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. I might, you know, I might as well just make this appointment because no matter what I tried to throw at you, you acknowledged it. I didn't feel like I wasn't heard but you kept going back to why you're there. This is why I'm here, this is why I'm here. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, well, how this is gonna end is an appointment. He's here to conduct business. It's not, you know, I'm not gonna throw him off and he's gonna run away. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can say it was weird hearing Detter in the hospital in this chair, and when you're standing face to face with somebody and they're looking you in the eye, and just in the moment, you'd already said it to me, and when you said I mean, they're going to be dead or in the hospital, I was like, it instantly made me, it was like, it's instinctual. I was like, oh, this is important. It's a weird, it's like, it, there's something in the subconscious that in that moment, in that communication, even though I kind of expected it, because we had talked about it, it's powerful. Yeah. There's a lot of subconscious things written into that. It's like, whoa, that's serious. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Actually, uh, when I started in November, one of the first things I did was the Legacy University. And I saw how you, you know, you were holding your kid in one hand, the other two girls running around the house. H how do you juggle uh, life and work? Do you just shut off your phone sometimes? Do you, that, you said your work hours are sacred. Do you have sacred family? Mm -hmm. how do you one of the things that I've done that I feel like I've done really well is in my life, and I feel like you can do really well is turn my brain on and off of things when they need to be on the right thing and off of the wrong thing, right? When I go to the gym, I turn, I turn my brain onto the gym and I leave my phone in the car and I'm at the gym. This is me and my body's health time, right? When I go to church, I'll either have my phone on do not disturb if I need to use my scriptures from my phone or I'll leave it in the car if I've got my scriptures and it's me and God time, right? When I go on a date night with my wife or a date night with my kids, I put on do not disturb and I'm in the zone with them, right? I have a very sacred hour and a half in the morning, from seven in the morning until like 8.30. That's my, that's, I'm waking up my kids from, for getting them ready for school, cooking breakfast for them, and we're playing a game, we're spending time together, and I'm there with them, and they're there back with me, and I'm not like checking my social media of what happened the night before, or looking at emails or text messages, I'm in the game with them. And people now will text at any time of the day and night. I, to keep my boundaries, I'll try not to respond back to people via text late, too late or even too early because I want to, them to respect my time and me respect their time. Hey man, you should actually be bonding with somebody else, not me right now, so I'm not gonna respond, <laughs> right? And so getting in the habit, figuring out what that is, like when you're supposed to be on the doors knocking, you need to turn social media off and knocking on, right? It's, a, it's okay to be like, hey, I'm out here posting on social media and then turn that off and get on the doors and be in the game on the doors because a focused four hours of knocking is better than an unfocused eight hours of knocking, right? Instead of flipping through people's stories, walking between, if you're in the zone and you're looking at the houses and you're trying to see what's going on and you're trying to like, what are things I can talk about and I'm there on the door, I'm connecting with people in a very different way than if I'm on social media, right? So the way that I've been able to, I feel like, do that, and there's, there's different times, the, the sacrifices, you're, you're, there's no such thing as work-life balance. What I'm striving for is work-life harmony. I'm trying to have harmony within my life, with my family, with my work, with my health, right? I need to have some harmony, and um, in order to do that, I go all in at whatever it is that I'm supposed to be at, like I'm there. I'm with, I'm, I'm at that place, I'm doing that thing, and then when I'm done with that thing, I'm flipping that off and I'm turning the next one on and I'm there. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I'll end on that. Respect the shift. Yeah, respect the shift. When it's time to be in the game and it's work time, game on for work time. So thank you guys for having me. This is great. Thanks.